<laughs> so, um, so since 2018 roundabout, about six years now, you've been extremely busy in putting out music at a pretty regular pace. So as a songwriter, what mm-hmm. kind of challenges do you face in keeping new music um, always, always flowing? Man, it's the same challenge in every portion of my business. It is finances. I have the songs, I have the musicians, I have the know-how. I, you know, I I produce a lot of my music, but if I don't, I got three other guys that I know that are ready to do it. I just don't have the funds to do it, you know, and it's and it's just because, you know, I I I pay bills with my money. <laughs> You know, I got, I got, I got to do this and take care of this. And so when I finally get, you know, get, you know, that extra money to go in and, and put in on a new track, I go in and I do it. But if, until I can, you know, I can't. Well, let me ask you, this is a full-time musician and really an independent one as well. Fully independent. I mean, you can't get more independent than Zach Webb. How important is it for you to have new music as a full-time musician? Because you're, you're already performing. You're already steadily booked. You already have music recorded, so what is it? What what's in it for you as a full time musician to even bother recording new music? So having new music and and you know putting music out constantly, getting that the algorithm of Spotify boosted, and all that it affects the live shows. So everything everything you put out, the social media, the hey how you doing, the this is where I'm going to be, to to the music itself all goes to when a venue looks at you and they'll be like, oh, this is Zach Webb. Well, uh, he ain't putting no music out for like five months. I don't know if he's active or not. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's like important for me to continue putting out music because I don't just play in Texas. So like you can see, like if if a Texas venue sees me, most of them will be like, oh yeah, because I I heard about Zach because he plays over in Fort Worth. He plays in Dallas. He plays in New Braunfels. But if I want to send out to, because like I want to, I want to send out to Florida, I want to send out to Wyoming and all those different places, they got to be able to to see from whatever they look at first. Okay, oh, he's got he's got stuff going on. Mm-hmm. He's got stuff going on. He's got stuff going on online. He's got stuff going on 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 his Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all that. And so I, uh, you know, right now it is. It's my my YouTube's bad, <laughs> and I'm not releasing enough music. That's what I'm working on. So it's all about relevancy, just staying relevant to people. And, and um, I mean, the music is good. So as long as you're continuing on that trajectory, um, you stay relevant and you stay, you stay, you stay busy, essentially. Um, so, yes, sir. again, yes, sir. I, I love these interviews because um, I have my outline and you're feeding me right into my outline which is is, it's just so cool when when i get to do this kind of stuff so you mentioned the studio and you producing records as well and my next question is about that so you led me straight into that um so from the standpoint of being in the studio how involved are you in the production and engineering side of your songs when they're when they're fleshed out so um i'm very involved in the performance of the of the track and also the just the overall end all okay that's what i want you know when it comes to how much reverb i want you know i like this i don't like that put this here put that there now granted i don't know much about turning knobs <laughs> i haven't got i haven't got that good at it yet but as for knowing what i like to hear and what i want the song to sound like i go for it you know mm-hmm. um on a on a couple of tracks that i got right now it's only you know it's me and my cousin me and my cousin jeremy we play, um, you know, I play all the string instruments, you know, the keys and all that, and he plays the drums. I think the drums is the only instrument that I'm like, okay, no, I'm not confident enough to play what I want from this instrument. So I need you to come in here and do this for me. But as for like the overall composition and the, you know, beginning stages of the studio work down to from the mastering track, hey, this needs to be tweaked, this needs to be tweaked, I'm involved in that whole process. And that's that's, that's the way to do it, man. And then that's why... Here in the 21st century, it's so cool to talk to folks like you because, you know, in the 80s, you wouldn't exist. I mean, sad sad to say, but, like, in the 80s, it was major label or nothing. Like, you had, you were just squashed out right. like an artist such as you. So it's so good to, to live in this time and, and place where folks like you can, 
really shine with your own creative process. I love that. And I mean, the studio can be such a rewarding place too, as an artist, I feel right. Like you yeah. go in there and that's, yeah. that's when your babies are born, so to speak. And, um, so I imagine it probably gets pretty emotional to see your songs cult, um, uh, culminated. Do you have any funny stories from the studio? I, everybody has a funny, a funny story or two, man. So, Man, no, my stories are boring right now. No way. <laughs> no, well, I mean, w like when I first started recording, like we didn't even have a studio. When I like when I was in that pop duo, I remember recording my first mixtape, and we didn't even have like a DI box. Um, and so we recorded the guitar and a microphone on top of a dresser, and I stood on a table. On t and record right into the microphone in the dresser. And then you could just hear people banging on the door. They were telling us to be quiet the whole recording. It was terrible. That's called character, oh, Zach. My gosh. That's called character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> So um, w one song that I kind of gravitated towards because I, I, I love your relationship with your wife. Your, your love story is so awesome. I love how you really sing her praises so much on your social media too. Um, I, I, I have a wife mm -hmm. as well, and she is the champion in my family. Um, and so I, I know how that is. Um, but you have a duet with her that you released. It's called Chasing After the Moon. And I have to hear your yeah. your uh, story for this one. Tell us how the song came to be. Oh, this is terrible. Because Chasing After the Moon is actually a song that I wrote for my ex fiance. Oops. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> <laughs> and so, but it was it was when I was in the pop duo. You know, I was that was when. And I always say, I always say, you know, she was my first love. And that was it. I was, you know, I was getting, I was in college. That was my first love. Now my wife, now she's my last love. I ain't got no other loves coming after this. Unless I have a baby, then, you know, maybe they're going to have to go habsies. We'll see. But that's not how know, that works. When I wrote that, this... that, that doesn't work that way. <laughs> the baby gets fullsies and then the wife gets like halvesies. That's how that works. You're going to find out. You're going to find hey, out. We're going to find out. But, uh, <laughs> I remember I wrote this song. I wrote that song in the back of, of a bus um, going to church camp, I believe. And, you know, I was on a real, uh, like, stars and lunar type kick writing phase of my life. And so, you know, but then, you know, as we got married, I, uh, I asked my wife, I said, how about you sing this song with me? And so she started, because like every once in a while at some shows, I'll be like, hey, can I sing a song with my wife? And she's like, and they're like, yeah. And she's like, oh, I don't know. Maybe we'll see. And so she comes up and, and she'll sing with me. And I was like, it just sounds so good. I said, you know what? Let's record it. Let's record it. And so it is definitely a, yeah, it was, it was written for my first love, but it is definitely going to last through my last love. Man, I love that. <laughs> that had to be a tough uh, a tough thing right like hey uh, i i wrote this song for this girl will you do the um will you do the other part for me <laughs> yeah no awkwardness whatsoever right none whatsoever oh man 